So I always wanted to play the classic version of Diablo 2, and I'm not talking the classic in Diablo 2 Resurrected, because really it's like a pseudo classic. It's got synergies, and really there's a bunch of different things that are not like the game was right when it launched. But I just never was able to take the time to go ahead and do the playthrough. Now that'll change recently here when I went on vacation to Arizona. Now I wanted to stream a few times, just a few hours here and there, you know, but I wasn't sure if the laptop I had could handle playing Diablo 2 Resurrected and streaming. I didn't know if it had enough power, but you know what it does have enough power for? A game from the year 2000. So I took this as the perfect opportunity to play the original launch version of Diablo 2. Personally, I originally picked up the game when I was a kid when the battle chest came out. So that was Diablo 2 along with the expansion of LOD. So I never took the opportunity to play this original version. It was incredibly fun. So this is sort of a drop highlights along with just highlights of the playthrough itself. First off, I do this playthrough with the Barbarian. I figure, hey, most people know that in original Diablo 2, you cannot buy mana potions. So this way you can leech mana back to use your skills or just use normal attacks. So this playthrough starts off by me coming out, killing a Quill Rat. Okay, why are you telling us that, Phil? Well, this is the first monster I kill. We move forward to the Den of Evil and I kill one more monster and then another one. Not sure if you've seen that, take another look. So an item dropped on your third monster kill. Who cares, Phil? Well, actually, the very first item that dropped off the third monster I killed in the playthrough is actually a set item. And this is actually something crazy to find super early on because this actually is the gloves for the death set. It actually has a bunch of poison res on it in poison length reduced, which if your mind is telling you correctly here, and Dario does a crazy amount of poison damage. So this actually helps out a ton, specifically the act boss for act one. And speaking of Endaril, here we are. Now I went ahead and did as much as I could to go ahead and get ready for this, but you can't actually drink poison potions in order to get your poison res up. So it is lucky I found those gloves. The good thing with those gloves, I can go ahead and just face tank Endaril without much problem just chugging potions along the way. I just swing, 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 swing. Eventually, Endaril gets chopped down. And unfortunately, even though it is her quest drops, don't really get a lot. Some gems, that's about it. But I am awfully proud of myself for at least accomplishing this one small milestone. And uh, while doing some leveling here, actually here's where I get some actual upgrades out of an urn right here or whatever, a jar. Doesn't really look like that much, but once I deed fastest hit recovery, now I believe fastest is actually 24 hit recovery. So that's not bad to get baby mana, baby life, you know, things like that, but at least an upgrade. Another upgrade here while leveling in Act 2 are actually these boots. Now, they have some fire res on it, and that's actually very great, along with a little bit of walk run. Now, there aren't all the crazy uniques and stuff there are in LOD, so these are actually a great option. Someone even told me a lot of people use these all the way to the end game, people that kind of remember playing this back in the day. Act 2 continues pretty uneventful. I have to spend way too long actually leveling my character, but we go after the big dog at the end of Act 2 here. That is Durio. Kind of a similar instance to how Andaril went. Just keep swinging, and eventually we chop him down without too much of a struggle. He actually seems way weaker. His hits don't hit as hard as they do kind of in modern day, it seems anyways. I get a pretty cool drop from Duriel actually, but also kind of disappointing because it is a unique. And I mean, this giant axe, it could be great for my build if I wasn't already putting points into Mace Mastery. You kind of got to commit early on. Boy, that is a beautiful looking axe if I don't say so myself. So I end up not actually being able to use this right now, but kind of just is what it is in this particular game. And you have no stash space, no stash space in order to save it for anything. And you can't transfer it over to any other characters either. So you just kind of got to toss it on the ground or just sell it to Charcy. But yeah, once again, not everything you're going to find is actually going to help you out. Here is actually a set shield that, well, if you were using a shield, this would be crazy. The perfect amount of block chance there, 69, and one to all skills. This full Saigon set, I bet, is awesome on any of the melee characters, but unfortunately, I'm planning on going into two-handed mauls, but you can't really use a shield with that, so you have to just go ahead and toss this out. It's an unfortunate. Can't use Saigon set at all either because there's no partial set bonuses in original D2, so it's all sort of worthless to me unless it has a stat on it that can help me. Act 3 goes essentially the same as Act 2, spend way too long leveling and just get some random magic stuff to kind of level up the gear a little bit, but we go after Mephisto here, and 
I actually accidentally died, but there's some kind of glitch here that, I don't know if it sort of killed me or if it glitched because I died, but it didn't register. No big deal, even after that happens, we'll, we'll come back around and go ahead and finish him off, and we actually get sort of a crazy drop. Oh my goodness, now I'm not even sure if you can find it yet, but my fingers are crossed so hard, I almost broke them, but we're obviously hoping this to be an SOJ. Early on here too, actually for melee characters, a Minald can actually help you out a ton with a little extra mana, because you never want to put points into that energy, am I right? And also, getting mana leech on a melee character, absolutely crucial. But unfortunately, we get a Nagel ring in here early on, in Diablo 2's history, it only got 15 all the time. There was not a range on the magic find. So unfortunately, this doesn't really help me out a ton at this point. Now, not much changes here in Act 4 until we move on here to Diablo. Now, he is quite the struggle. I do a lot of running in circles because his attacks, wow, that will absolutely nuke me, that whole lightning laser thing right there. But eventually, once again, chop him down. Now we are really hoping for good drops going into Nightmare here because there is no Act 5, no expansion of course. Well, that's a little unfortunate, but the game's over. The countdown begins until we're kicked from the game. We gotta leave before then or it just kicks us out of here. So make sure we're paying attention there and we're moving on to Nightmare. Is what you would think, but actually I got my absolute ass handed to me constantly. So I had to go ahead and level, find some better gear and stuff like that here at the end of normal difficulty. So I actually needed to find something with Mana Leech on it. So there we go, I find it, but then I lost my Life Leech. And then I actually got a ring with Life Leech at the exact same time that I found the Mana Leech Amulet. So it actually doesn't seem like that crazy of a find, but getting both Life Leech and Mana Leech at the same time on two different pieces of gear actually helped me out an insane amount right now. It really gave me so many more choices to swap gear around. So I'm out here doing my Hellforge, and actually the highlight isn't the Hellforge. Now look at this right over here as the gems drop. Look at this unique Ooms Lament right here. Oh my goodness. In the same vein as finding that Saigon shield, something I don't need. Imagine if I was a Necromancer finding that right now. It'd be insane, just insane. But unfortunately, we pretty much just got to leave it on the ground because he can't transfer it and can't use it here on the old school. Diablo 2 offline single player. Now, while leveling in the Chaos Sanctuary, I actually get a ring that helps me out a ton. Now, it has FCR on it, yes, and I don't really need it, correct. But that 51 to mana is actually huge, actually huge. Now, I believe my barb at this point only had like 32 mana total. So essentially, this is like getting, what, 125% increased mana, which really that number would be absolutely insane. And as a percentage, it sounds even crazier, but this 51 mana actually helps out my character quite a bit. And of course, between this clip and the last, I spent six hours leveling and you see I transferred over to a two handed mace and using whirlwind instead of double swing. Now that I'm finally high enough level here at the beginning of nightmare, I spent many hours leveling. So here we are going after the act boss here, act one, nothing crazy to find, but just, you know, some magic and rare stuff in this game. Magic and rare stuff is way great to have because you can't make rune words. You got to have something right. So here I'm utilizing leap attack when I'm out of mana and also using whirlwind and that leap attack works surprisingly well. And actually whirlwind works great against single targets, kind of way better than it does against big packs, actually. But there we go. Chopping down Nightmare and Daryl. Once again, a ton of gems and not really a lot of great drops. I wonder if in this early version, gem drops is actually like inherent to Andaro because in normal and nightmare here now, both we've gotten a ton of gems. Decided to go do some Andaro runs because actually you get a lot of experience in these early versions from the act bosses. And I didn't know if I get lucky on items maybe from Andaro. I don't really know. I was kind of guessing and checking as I went through this game, but Andaro chopped down super easy with Whirlwind. We get another set item that could be useful. Just getting high amounts of resistance and some other things that kind of help out your builds is actually crucial here in the old school Diablo 2 here. You get some half freeze duration on the Irathic gloves and some cold resistance. This next highlight actually more of kind of a funny one than anything. So it turns out there used to be a super unique quill rat right next to this waypoint out here. They have since moved it away from the waypoint so you couldn't spam it quite as fast and as easy as this. It'd be like if Pendle was right on top of a waypoint, right? But we go ahead and slap down this pack out here. They're actually quite tough. I was trying to get experience and, of course, trying to go ahead and get lucky on items. Well, here we go ahead and get another set item here. 
Now, being a barbarian, getting enhanced damage and attack rating seems like a good thing, but after putting the helm actually on and doing the math and look at the numbers, because it doesn't say the enhanced damage, it looks like it turns out to be something like two, three, maybe 5% enhanced damage total. It helps you out almost nothing. Same as every other time, I'm trying to find ways to level and maybe get better gear, so I'm running in Daro for the experience and hopefully to get lucky on some items. Well, I do kill stuff and boom, open some caskets along the way. That's Death Sash, fellas, and this is actually crucial nowadays because it has cannot be frozen on it, very hard to get. Especially, you need this sometimes for melee characters. Now, for Whirlwind back in the day, not as crucial because actually when you get frozen, when you don't move, you actually hit monsters even more. So I use this from time to time, but I actually end up not using it that much. On top of that, this would usually be a good partial set nowadays, but there are no partial set bonuses back in the day, so I don't get the increased attack speed or the leech or anything like that. Now, I had heard that gambling back in the day like this was actually an amazing way to get, well, the uniques you needed. Now, there's only the lowest level uniques, like the normal level of items. There's no exceptional uniques, and there wasn't even elite base stuff in the game yet. So I heard there was a 3% chance of actually getting a unique when you gambled something. So here's what I'm going ahead and do, gambling all different types of stuff, rings and different things like that, trying to get an SOJ or a Minald or something like that. But I do need a better mall too, right? And there's one called a Bone Snap. Now, what's the chances I would get one of those right away, right? 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 Oh, you see my face right there, fellas. I know it right off the bat when I see the graphics. Yeah, I gambled a Bone Snap here. This is Act 2 of Nightmare, and I was getting my ass handed to me here in Act 2 of Nightmare. So this is a incredibly huge boost. Now onto the big dog for Act 2 here in Nightmare, and Act 2 was actually very difficult. You may not think this, but actually those birds hit incredibly hard in this version. But you know what isn't too much of a problem? We've got Duriel right here. A few whirlwinds through, there's only three whirlwinds through, and look at his health, he's already over halfway down, three quarters of the way down, one more whirlwind, almost took him out, five whirlwinds chopping down Duriel in no time. Now definitely that bone snap helped out like crazy with all that crushing blow, I am sure of it. Now, we go ahead and don't really show anything for Act 3 because there was nothing really noteworthy. We get a few levels, maybe find a few magic or rares that weren't that crazy. Let's look at Act 4. Now, this was incredibly fruitful, so I decided to just be a complete gambling degenerate here for a while. This is off stream, you see, no picture of me over the corner. But I go ahead and gamble myself a belt now because it was kind of a weak spot for me, I suppose. Just had one on that had some strength, and I got myself a blade buckle. And now I'm continuing to level here in Act 5 in, in order to get like items to sell to gamble some more stuff and of course experience here. But I didn't gamble for everything I got. I actually found some things along the way. There's a unique armor light plate, and that is actually Heavenly Garb. Now, kind of neat to go ahead and find this right here, but not particularly useful here on my character. Really, it's just got the all res about all that helps you out. Now, just finding uniques in this game is pretty cool. And actually, I get one here, another one that's, you know, kind of neat to find, but it doesn't really help me out because I'm a Whirlwind Maul Barbarian. So here's actually a unique sword. This one is the Patriarch. Nothing really even helped me out at this point anyways. 100 gold find, I suppose, but just kind of cool to find. Back to full-blown gambling degeneracy, and here I forgot to hit record before I started gambling or whatever, but I did gamble myself some hot spurs. Notice the difference here, instead of having the 45 to fire res here that they have nowadays, it's only 15. Doesn't help you out nearly as much, eh? After kind of thinking and looking into what uniques I could actually go ahead and get, and also which ones are cheap enough because like, armors on this thing are like 200k gold and that's the max you can actually carry so i go ahead and try to get myself some hands of brock they actually have dual leech both three percent not that high but i mean it would help you out if you're dealing a bunch of damage you can leech back a ton of mana or a ton of life right so eventually it takes way too long but here i gamble the hand of brock really really does help me out a ton I start thinking maybe Blade Buckle not the best choice since I'm struggling with mana quite a bit, and who doesn't need some res, right? So I go ahead and try to get myself a Night Smoke, and it doesn't take me long. This is like the third belt I gamble of it. I get myself a Night Smoke. If only it was always that easy. As of right now on the playthrough, Nightmare Chaos Sanctuary is actually as far as I got. This game is incredibly hard, especially when it's so difficult to level on offline single player, because there is no player's X command, so it's all player's one difficulty leveling. Oof. Another reason is this glitch right here. If you've seen what happened there, I was whirlwinding, and then I went ahead and died. But there's some glitch that you die while you're not dead and you come back to life, but you're not dead. 
So the thing is, you can't go back to town and run out and get your body again and continue the run. So it's essentially like old school PlayStation games where if you die, you go back to the previous checkpoint. And you got to go into it again. You can't pick up from right where you died and left off. So unfortunately, this glitch is incredibly painful in the cast sanctuary because it is so hard. It's so hard, especially when you're whirlwinding, you get hit with a bunch of attacks that you don't even see because of other glitches in the game and just a ton of issues like that. So this particular glitch that you're seeing a few different examples of right here is kind of why right now I'm playing off stream, just playing for fun in my downtime. But this is why I ended up kind of holding up right here at the beginning of Nightmare. I'm going to continue this. And I'm going to try to eventually finish the game through hell difficulty, but on this particular build, on this particular character, man, Chaos Sanctuary is a struggle, a struggle. I would highly recommend anyone who loves Diablo 2 try out some of these old patches, pre-LOD type of stuff. It's incredibly fun and challenging, but fun. If you want to see a lot of the ways that the game is different than current modern day D2R, check this video out right up over here. Peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.